Hey everybody, Dr. Gary Thoreau here, and I just want to talk about ankle sprains. I've had millions of ankle sprains in the past. I used to have to tape my ankle up for almost every match and game that I played, even my trainings as well, because it was just that bad. So I know exactly what it's like to have these ankle pains that just keep coming back or they just don't go away. However, if you did a strengthening or rehab program for it, that will severely improve your chance of getting well and then of course not requiring all these braces and all this other kind of stuff. So I'm going to show you a bunch of things that you can do uh, in levels of progression so that you can start working on building up ankle stability. One last note, remember that ankle stability is not just about the ankle, we need the whole chain from our foot, ankle, knee, hip, lower back, pelvis, core, we need all of this stuff to work together in order to have great stability and of course good performance. Okay, so the first thing is you want to kind of test the ankle and see what you can do. So just balance on one leg and time how long you can stay there for. So how long you can stay there for means that when you balance, you need to have your feet just slightly up off the floor next to the other ankle. The second thing is put your hands just on your hips. Anything that you do that moves you away, your hand goes out, your body moves a lot and deviates. If your leg moves around further away, if any of this stuff happens, then your time stops. Of course, if you're hopping around on the foot and your foot is shifting as well, then the time stops too. Ideally, we should be able to hold our stance on one leg for a whole 45 minutes without moving or flinching or touching the walls, putting the leg down, with our eyes open and our eyes closed. Test that out and see where you're at. And now you have a benchmark so that when you start going through the program, you want to see an improvement in that score. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to practice balancing on one leg. And that's just going to be as simple as standing up one leg exactly like the test and just staying there for as long as you can. Now for some people, you might want to start with fingers up on the wall and just holding it here. So this gives you a little bit of stability with one hand or two hands. And if you're finding it really hard, then this is a really good place to start to really start to engage. Also, one thing to remember is make sure that you're using your hip, your glute muscles, because your butt muscles are the ones that are supporting your whole body and you're not tilting or dropping. You're keeping yourself in a really nice alignment by using the glutes and using the back of the hip here. So make sure they're going there. So after you've done your one-legged balance, try and do that with eyes open and eyes closed and just repeat that a few times. After that, the second step is to stand on one leg and just see if you can gently raise up onto your toes. And then once you go up, you come down again, right? So raising up on your toes and then coming down. Right? And we try and do that as gently, as carefully as possible. Again, if you're struggling really hard, come back to the wall, pop your fingers there and that'll make it a lot easier to come up and down. One finger is just slightly harder again, okay? And then of course, no fingers, and just be able to control that movement. So that's step two. Okay, step three, now we wanna start getting your body to move a little bit more. So what you're going to do is you're gonna balance on one leg again, you're gonna get your steady position where you're not ooh, wobbling around, and from here, you're gonna hop 90 degrees. It doesn't matter to the right or the left, because you're gonna do two circles in both directions. So it's gonna look like this, we're gonna start here, we're gonna hop, and once you stop, you have to catch yourself. You have to plant your foot, land it, before you jump again. Plant it, plant it, Okay, and that's one circle. I'd go again that way, and then I'd go the opposite way, on the same leg. Then I'll change legs and do it the other side. So eight hops, two circles, both directions. So this is step three. Make sure that you plant your foot every single time and get steady before you take off for the next step. Fantastic, so if you manage to do those 90 degree hops, the next thing you can do is you can do 180 degree hops. Exactly the same thing, 180 degree hops. So we're gonna start here, balancing on one leg. Gonna take a bigger jump this time. And again, remember to land your hops. Make sure that you're steady 100% of the time. You hit the ground and you stick it, okay? After you've done that, 180 degree hops, you can also hop from side to side, so really big broad hops. So if I stand over here, further away, 
I'm just gonna jump as far as I can sideways. And again, we want to land these hops. Over the other way, land these hops. Woo, land these hops. So try these out. These are now larger hops. All right, the next progression after that is starting to get some fine control and a little bit of speed and agility in through your ankle as well. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put an X on the floor, so it's gonna look like this. Put an X or a plus across on the ground and what you're gonna do is you're gonna stand in any of the four corners here and you're just gonna hop from one to the other. So you can hop in a square or you can hop in a diagonal sort of bow. So you can kind of go up, diagonal down, up, diagonal down, or you can jump diagonal down, diagonal up, down. So either way works. The thing is we want to start to do it a little bit faster. So it's going to be hop, 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 right? And in any way you can, and you just try to make it as smooth as possible. Okay, so the next thing now is we want to start improving that whole chain that I was talking about from your feet all the way through your ankle, knee, hip, lower back, core, all of this has to work together. So we're going to do something very simple to a warrior three exercise. What's going to happen is you're going to stand again on one leg, balance yourself out, and then you're going to slowly lower yourself down and try and keep everything as steady as possible as you come down into as horizontal position as possible. And then of course, coming back up. So we can do it in one of two ways, exactly like I did just then, we'll just do it one more time. So we're just gonna come down, control, control, control. And when you're here, we really wanna stabilize everything in through that leg. And of course, use the other butt muscle to really get some height into that back leg. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, I'll do it on the other side, is you can do like a running man pose. So opposite arm, opposite leg here. You're gonna start here, and you're just gonna come down and come up. And this looks easy, but some people who have some ankle problems, they find it very hard to balance and get steady. So if you're a runner or if you just need sort of these lunging type of movements, then this is a very, very good exercise for you to make sure that whole chain works, the core is working, and everything is connected. Fantastic, so if you've got through all that, then your ankles should be almost bulletproof by now and you should also be back into sports and starting to train really, really hard. Of course, these are all ankle exercises, but you can do anything. You can do your squats and lunges, walking lunges, what have you. All of these things are definitely going to help you as well. If you want to take it one step further, there's two more things that you can do. The first thing is, if you manage to get yourself a mat or something that's thick and heavy, something that is a little bit wobbly, then use that and you can do exactly the same exercises on it and you'll have an imbalanced or unbalanced surface. I don't really like wobble boards, they do work, but to me I use wobble boards more for range of movement rather than for balance. Okay, so the other thing you can do to make it even more challenging and really get your, you know, up your game and get your ankle really bulletproof is what's called perturbations. And perturbations just means adding a little bit of shock or force because with everything, like I play soccer, and when we play soccer, you don't know what the other guy is going to do. He's going to run into you, bump into you in one shape or form, and you're going to still need to find stability. So right now, I'm balancing on one leg if you just have a look, and we're also holding onto this band here. And so I'm doing this with a partner, but what I can do is I can just hold this balance on my one leg and I'll ask my partner, can you just pull the band in any direction? Yeah, that's it. All right, so if you start to pull the band in a certain way, like I'm doing this, and you can see the camera shaking, because I'm pulling the band and she's having to balance and st stabilize accordingly. So if she did the same thing, can you do that again? Yep. More. <laughs> okay, so you get the point. Essentially what you want is you want somebody to either pull on a band for you or even walk up to you and just start tapping you and just pushing you and you go, oh, and then you catch yourself and push, oh, right? And you catch yourself. Anyway, it doesn't really matter where your head, your legs, if you just get them to just you know, gently tap, 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 and you're just getting pushed around like this, this is powerful stuff for your nervous system. This is powerful stuff for really getting your ligaments and getting everything just fired up and bulletproof ready for any sport. 
So try out this whole entire ankle series and I can guarantee that your ankles are going to be remarkably better. You just have to put in the effort and put in the work.